Greetings, humanoids of the interwebs. My name is Bob, and this is Kerbal Space Program. Greeting to all you men and women and boys and girls and little green men, especially little green men. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. That's right. Okay, um, we're going to continue with our um, uh, epic journey to uh, Jewel uh, in uh, the next episode. Uh, right now, I've been really having some fun with the um, uh, planes and space planes, especially the new cockpit that has the, the big canopy on it and uh, flying it from uh, that position. So we're going to do a little um, s fun with planes and space planes today. I'll get right into it. Load spacecraft. Fun one. My, my, my names are not getting very inventive right now. The, the fun one aircraft. There you go. Pretty simple, straightforward. Flies really nice. Let's go fly. Ganister. Ganister. Ah, shit. Dude, chill out. This is a well proven and tested aircraft. There is no need for you to be alarmed. Except for the fact that I'm about to do some really radical maneuvers that may end up getting killed. Aside from that, there is no need to be alarmed. <laughs> okay, throttle up. Isn't that awesome? Cool. Alright. Do a little stunt flying here. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Had a little bad fly in there. Let's restart that. <laughs> uh, Ganister Kerman back from the dead. Alrighty. Do an IVA. Throttle up. Let's go. gonna kill you this time, Ganester. Really? Really? <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Okay. Here's my important Kerbal Keeper. Guess I should keep an eye on the altitude, huh? I 
to have some kind of obstacle course here. Something you could build that would, uh, like, loops you could fly through. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I killed the guy with the launch pad too. Okay. Restart. This is just one endless nightmare for you, isn't it, Ganester? Yes, it is. One endless nightmare you can't wake up from. So sort of like the the whole of Kerbal Space Program. Alrighty. bubble canopy here better than I do on the downside view for some reason. It just seems easier to line up on the, the runway. recommended flight procedure here for us. In case any of you plan on going to flight school later in your lives, don't do this. <laughs> Successful mission. Okay, uh, now let's see. Let's see where my uh, space plane is here. I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting weird graphical glitch out of that thing. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is up with that. I'm not moving. Okay, whatever. Um, I'm gonna forward time for a bit. So this guy gets to the uh, sunny side, and we're going to go take a look at the world from orbit. Alrighty. Go ahead and exit this. Space plane test. Hudby, Hudby Kerman. Uh, 
I pretty much just just did this rocket uh, so that I could see uh, be looking at that bubble can canopy from orbit because I thought that would be cool. And in fact, it is cool. It's very cool. Let's turn the canopy down. Ah, that'd be you're freaking out. Yeah, see, that's awesome. I like that. I'll do a little time compression, get to the sunnier part. Oh, and moonrise. Moonrise. Almost like doing an EVA without having to be outside. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Okay, I was actually thinking about uh, taking uh, old uh, Hudby uh, to the, to Minimus. I think I've got enough fuel. Let's go ahead and see if we can get him there. I used um, uh, mod parts for this too because if you're if you make a uh, space plane that's minimus capable and some of the stock parts, you have to really create a just like creating a rocket that goes to jewel on uh, stock parts. You have to really create a monstrosity, and the system doesn't like that. Oh shit! I'm pointing the wrong way. I have made uh, I have made uh, minimus capable space planes that uh, that totally use stock parts, but they're they're really quite a cluster frack to 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 fly. Get the shiny side up. There we go. Uh -uh. All right, let's take a look at Minimus. What I do when I'm going to Minimus is I um I, I could actually, you know, try to wait till it's lined up where I can I can shoot, like out here, out out directly without having to do the inclination change. The inclination change makes things easier though. And what I do to do that is I line up the orbit of the moon, which is a more or less perfectly equatorial orbit. Uh, with the orbit of uh, Minimus intersecting on Kerbin. Let's switch our view to Kerbin, okay? Uh, and um, so that when I get to a point where that inter intersection happens, where is he? Okay. Then I'll do the inclination burn. And that will be pointed south. So 180 degrees. You can land uh, space planes pretty easily on uh, Minimus as versus uh, Mun uh, because um, uh, it's got some large areas that are perfectly flat. Uh, you know, try to, to land space planes on the MUN. Problem is, you either have to uh, land on your tail fin, uh, which on on any kind of incline is going to be a disaster. Uh, or, um, well, yeah, I mean that's that's really your only option because, uh, uh, well, you probably could try to do some VTOL type thing, but uh, really, space planes don't work too well on the moon. They work fine on uh, on the Minmus.
Alrighty, are we still aligned? Okay, getting ready to do our inclination burn now. You zoom out and zoom back in, it's easier to see where the exact line is. Almost there. Very nearly. Bingo! Okay. And we're about to do our minimus burn straight away. That's fortuitous. I think I probably have enough fuel to get him to minimus and get him back. Uh, but as I said in the previous video, coming coming home is always more optional than going. <laughs> Alrighty. All right. Well, this is going to take a minute, so I'll catch up with you when we are heading to heading to Minimus orbit. Check that out. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Goodbye, Kerbin. Goodbye, Moon. Awesome. That is just so full of wind, I can't stand it. Woo! I'm interrupting this uh, flight to uh, Minimus to show you something really cool, which is the night sky on Duna. Our, whoop, whoa. Our boys are still there. Probably tucked tight in their little cramped little beds. But doesn't that look cool? There's a there's Ike there. Everything still looks pretty red, you know. It looks sort of blood blood reddish. Uh, but the night sky just looks very cool there. Very awesome. Okay, now back back to our flight to Minimus already in progress. We interrupt this uh, interruption of the flight already in progress. Uh, to show you um, uh, the view from Ike. Now our our boys on uh, Duna are on, uh, in night right now, uh, but uh, Ike, is, our our people on Ike, our person on Ike is in the sunshine uh, and uh, very scenic view. Very nice. Very much what a foreign alien planet should look like. Okay, now we we leave, take leave of our interruptions of the mission already in, in progress and return to the mission already in progress. Look at that shit, man. Look at that shit. Ah! Slow down. That is full of wind. If that were any more full of wind, I couldn't stand it. Okay, we had to wait a little bit, uh, do a little time compression because uh, the uh, lake areas, the flat areas that we can actually land on right now, um, are, we're not not uh, towards the sun side. So uh, we are about to land on Minimus. Minimus, Minimus. About to land on Minimus. And really, the, the the point of this this whole video today is not to really achieve anything that 
you know, I haven't done a million times before. Uh, but uh, it's to just to check out the cool cockpit views, you know. There are some awesome cockpit views. I might use this uh, same cockpit for uh, some interplanetary travel sometime just so I can see how cool things look. Okay, let's do our pre-burn. I like to kick the um, the altitude down a bit uh, before I do commit to the full full fledged uh, burn here. Um, just so part of it's done. Okay, time compress. Okay, time to slam on the brakes. Minimus, minim, uh, minimus, minimus is uh, great to land on because you can do really fairly precision uh, landings. Um, you know, if you have a base here or something, you can pretty well uh, land right where you want to. In this case, I'm going to land kind of close to that finger of the uh, land there. I don't want to get too close because sometimes what looks like mountain or looks like plain from up here really isn't. So, and this thing definitely is not going to be landing on any mountains. It's got little little landing gear sticking out from its tail fins. That's just it might might work fine on the the flat oceans or lakes or whatever the hell they're they're called of Minmus, but it's not going to work on the hills, especially not on the hills of Minmus, which are pretty rough. All right, let's time compress a little bit. Yeah, stop it. All right, let's go ahead and kill off our horizontal velocity. You really ought to have, have an option to make the nav ball bigger because if you're trying to do precise things like get this indicator right on the right on the money as far as being full straight up. The one we have here is not not perfect. Alright. Now we drop. And we're only going 10 meters a second. Um, I'm going to be dropping. <coughs> I'm going to be dropping for quite a while here. <coughs> Any good views yet? Oh well, not really. I'm not even going to try to do this from a cockpit view because uh, we can't see a damn thing from up there landed vertically. Alrighty, this will take a little while. Okay, we're not exactly rich when it comes to fuel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a white knuckle landing. Uh, get down to either 4,000 feet or above uh, like 125 meters a second before I try to, to break. Uh, because uh, we've got... 61 liters in there, 150, 150 in there, 150 in there. Oh, well, we got we got enough to get us home, but still, I'm not uh, looking to spend more fuel than we need. Uh, we're 6,000 meters, 74 meters a second. Well, this airspike can kick out some some thrust, so I'm not worried. 
5,000 meters or 5,500 meters. 4,000 meters. Okay, when we get to about 4,000 meters, I think it's time to start breaking. And our speed is picking up too. 4,000 meters is good. 4,000 meters. I didn't need to kill off that much. I think I've still got allergy problems today, so I may sound a little funky. Okay, getting a bit off of the uh, off of the vertical here. Let's see if we can fix that up. There we go. And this thing doesn't maneuver too well, so we need to probably stay straight bolt upright here for the remainder. Okay, after we killed off our velocity, we're still only going about 18 meters a second, so we're in good shape. We get down to a thousand meters, we'll see about breaking a little bit. Hudby is pretty uh, happy right now. Um, he was uh, completely freaking out. I mean, as bad as uh, Shep and Kerman used to do, uh, he was out totally freaking out. But he appears to be pretty happy right now. Maybe he's liking the lack of G-forces. Or maybe he has confidence in my flying skills. Okay, 1,500, 36 meters a second. I'm going to bleed off a little of that. Seven. Six, five, four. Not really seeing much on the surface right now. <coughs> Three. Two. Okay, we're coming down. Let's see what our... Yeah, we got a little... Oh, nope, wrong way. Turn around this way so I can see what I'm doing. Really don't want to have a whole lot of uh, horizontal velocity. Yeah, we're we're good. I'm just landing on these little toothpicks here. Shadow. Perfect world. I want a less than one meter a second landing.
Touchdown. SASR. Congratulations, Husby. You're on Minimus. Not really much of a view here. All right, step out. Spread your just, just not no s s stretch your legs, not spread your oh shit, tilting. Tell me you're not gonna fall over. Okay, stretch your legs there, dude. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's wobbling back and forth. I think what happened is I'm actually I'm actually on the uh, actually on the uh, engine here, <coughs> which is not good because we don't want that engine to break off. Because if we, it breaks off, Hudby's not going home. All right, EVA. Whoop. Whoa. I really like Min Minimus because it's so easy to land on. Uh, when they have the keythane plug in, it's easy to get here and get some fuel and go on about your business. It's a very cool moon. I like Minimus. All right, there you are. Yeah, I'm sitting on the. Looks like I'm sitting on the engine. Oh well. <laughs> Hopefully, it still works. Uh, any scenic, scenic points around here? <coughs> Not that much. Let's play Hop Over the Space Plane. Whee! Whoa, don't go to orbit there, dude. Don't bump into the ship either. That would be uncool. Alright. I was going to put some ladders on this thing, uh, but I uh, just never got around to it. I guess I probably should have some extra landing legs, huh? Those landing legs are looking pretty precarious. But we made it. We're here. Pointed up to the cosmos. Woo. Screenshot. All right, guy. Let's get you back in the cockpit if we can, without tilting the, the whole ship over. Don't hit the ship. Go up to it real nice and eh, easy like. Oh, that, was, that was not what I had in mind. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He bumped his head. Alright, let's try it again. Getting back in your cockpit is a mission requirement, man. If you don't get back in your cockpit, you have failed the mission. Not to mention the fact you'll be stuck on Minmus. There we go. 
Okay. Now with any luck, you'll be heading home. Oh, luck is with us. Trying to range just so I can maybe see something out the cockpit here. Not really. Then I can see something now. Nope. Well, yeah, just a tad. Hardly anything. Now I can see something. Ah, oh, curb and rise. Now the real trick of the matter is, will we be able to get home? Unlike with some of my missions, uh, I'm going to actually try to get this one home. Come on, it's choking. I think try is the operative word here. You know, it's really pretty easy to get back from uh, Minmus. I'm probably not going to be able to pick my landing spot too well. I probably just got to take what I can get. I hope it's in the sunlight. I've got the uh, the the uh, airplane lights plug in. I should have put some airplane lights on this so I can actually see the ground if I happen to be uh, landing. But I could always do an instrument landing too. Okay, where is It's choking again. Stop that. Okay, we'll get this side. Uh, the periapsis a little higher. That's good enough. And let's time warp over here. Now, in terms of, of going home, um, there's probably an optimal way to do this. Uh, what I often do is I, I'll burn, uh, like right here close to where the periapsis is, uh, shooting off off toward a caddy corner, uh, what the, what usually will happen is that um, uh, I'll get re recaptured, not recaptured, but a, a re-encounter with Minmus, uh, which will wind up putting uh, pulling my periapsis in uh, Kerbin orbit uh, 
closer to Kerbin. Uh, so we'll see how that works. Okay, we're going to do our burn to uh, head back to Kerbin and hope we have enough fuel. Probably we will. It doesn't really take that much. Uh, it takes a, a bit to, um, to get uh, down low enough in Kerbin's orbit. But, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, time compress. Okay, yeah, it's not going to work out quite like I hoped. I don't think I'm going to get recaptured by uh, my uh, Minmus. And my ap Apogee is way out there. That kind of sucks. Okay, so that was a fail. Let's go ahead and go out to our Apogee. It's rocket science. It's tough stuff. And these little green men's lives depend on them, so they depend on us to know our orbital mechanics. And if we don't, they die. Still, I don't think that the Kerbins have as quite as put, place quite as much value on uh, human or Kerbin Kerbal life as we do or they wouldn't have this kind of space program <laughs> uh, to be honest I, I don't think that they quite cherish uh, sentient life in the way that we do uh, because uh, clearly they're not uh, afraid to throw away some some uh, human or curb curbable lives on their space program which you know even on our space program you know people die but uh, <laughs> They die a little bit more often of the Kerbal Space Program. Although, actually, I haven't actually uh, killed a Kerbal on a major... I've killed lots of Kerbals on, in testing. I've not killed a Kerbal on a major mission for quite a while. Oh. Now, is that going to help us out? It might. Let's give it a shot. And if nothing else, it'll give us a chance to uh, check out the moon close up uh, through our bubble canopy, which will be cool. Mm. That's really what this is all about anyway, it's an excuse to, uh, to look at stuff. I'm afraid though that <coughs> dark side is going to be towards us. Uh, okay, there's the moon. Uh, let's get our picture window situated close to it. Unfortunately, we're not going to be going that close. Uh, it would, would be cool if we could do like a 6,000 meter buzz, you know, past it. Uh, turn back.
Alrighty. Ooh, that's cool. Alright, time compression. Mm -hmm. There it is, the moon. Goodbye, moon. Whoa, that was cool. Okay, uncompress. <coughs> uh, okay, the computer's locking up again. There we go. Okay, we're back. Okay, let's see what that did to our orbit, if anything good. It might have helped slightly. Okay, now we have no choice but just simply burn fuel to, uh, damn it, stop locking up. We have no choice but to simply burn fuel into, uh, into, uh, a re-entry trajectory on Kerbin. I don't need to waste any more fuel than I absolutely have to. So we're going in for a direct descent. Oh, shit, it was going the wrong way. That's not going to help my fuel consumption. All right, let's get going. Retrograde. And the planets are so pretty now. Kerbin just looks awesome. Uh. All right. Now I can probably control whether I land in the sunlight side or not. Uh, I can't really control where because just because this continent is going to be underneath me now doesn't mean it's going to be underneath me when I get there. So we will aim for. Aim for somewhere in the sunlight side, and we're going to be coming in pretty steep. So I hope I built this plane well. This is going to be put to the test. Uh, Alright, it's good enough. Yeah, we're going to be coming in real hot. I don't know how it's going to work. But little Hudby's life depends on it. <laughs> okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Looks like we're going to be landing on this continent uh, after all. Which is cool. Okay, we're gonna do a death dive. Check this shit out. Yeah. Time compress. Yeah. Banzai. <laughs> Banzai, motherfuckers. Uh, it's crashed again. Okay. All right, now we gotta get serious and get little Hudby home.
Okay. Holy shit, we're coming in hot. Pray, Hudby. Pray. Pray to whatever god you believe in. <laughs> Seriously, dude, pray. Dude, we're gonna die. Seriously. So, like, pray. Pray now. Okay, okay, we're good. What's our speed? Uh, 153 meters per second. Be, I think he possibly might live. Altitude. Get down. Okay, time to uh, look for a landing spot. It looks sort of flat. You might live after all. I know that gratifies you. <laughs> of course, you're probably going to be landing here in Bangladesh or something. There'll probably be cannibals here wherever you land. They're going to eat you. But at least you'll be back on Kerbin. Altitude. Altitude. Oh, we're, we're okay. Sideways. I don't think we are. Yeah, we're good. Throttle's not going to do me any good then. <laughs> Alright, well, we need to I'll go ahead and lose some altitude in exchange for speed. I hope I don't get below 500. Or much below 500. Out of fuel? Totally? Completely? Yeah, buddies. I'm out of fuel. Okay, worst case scenario, I do have parachutes. That's not going to do a whole lot if I have to parachute in the whole plane in the ocean, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm running out of velocity real quick. You didn't have a problem with splashdown, did you, buddy? Mayday, Mayday. Minimus Express is going down.
I don't think I'm going to make it to land. Uh, running out of, running out, oh, whoa, whoa, out the dude, out the dude, out the dude. Out the dude. Splash down. Ready? What, did that work? No. What the hell? Good ship, Minimus Express. Can you like have a, do you have a paddle or something? Can you get out and row? Maybe no. Okay. Oh well, if we had a, a successful mission, landed a bit short of the runway, uh, but we are in one piece, and uh, he'll get on the radio right away and hope that somebody answers. Alrighty. Well, I think that's all for right now, and uh, next time we're going to. Uh, the giant gas giant uh, jewel uh, and uh, uh, our primary objective is to uh, land on Lathe, the uh, uh, ocean planet um, but we uh, whoop, I hate that when that happens freezes uh, we're also um, hoping to have a uh, whoa no time for a nap now dude seriously dude wake up you're in an emergency situation stop it dude seriously all right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to uh, hopefully do at least do a flyby of uh, Tylo. I've never been there, and I'm kind of curious to take a look at it. I would kind of like to land on it, but that may have to be a separate mission from the mission to uh, Lathe. So uh, we're about to embark on a series of explorations uh, of uh, the uh, moons of the gas giant Jewel, uh, and that's going to be very cool. And uh, that's all for right now. See you next time.